And our first talk is uh, from, I'm Jim Freerix from Georgetown University. This is actually my uh, second Chesapeake section uh, uh, meeting. Um, and I'm gonna be your chair for the next two sessions. Um, our talk, uh, our first talk, we have three talks in this uh, next session. Our first talk is by uh, John Schiller from Broadneck High School and Peter Baraton from the US Naval Academy. And it's entitled Quantum Information Science for the High School Student and Ex an Exploration of Spin First Methodologies. Uh, John and Peter, go ahead, share the screen and get started. All right, good morning, All right everybody, can you hear me? I can hear you, Peter, you hear me too? Yeah, I hear you, John. <laughs> Thanks. All right, go ahead. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, so I'm Peter Brereton. I'm in the physics department at the United States Naval Academy. Uh, and I'm joined by... Uh, this is John Schiller. I'm a high school student, a uh, public high school student in Annapolis, Maryland, Broadneck High School. Great. And uh, so we're, we're going to talk to you about uh, kind of a pilot program that uh, John has been hosting at Broadneck uh, mm -hmm. on uh, introducing quantum information topics to uh, the high school uh, set. One second. I'm having a hard time flipping slides. Mm -hmm. There we go. Can you see that, Peter? Yep. Good. So our presentation today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what exactly it is that we're doing at the high school level, being able to bring in some quantum information science. We um, will discuss some of our pedagogical approach, uh, what we've been able to do so far, and some of the lessons that we've learned along the way. Yeah, so uh, quantum information science uh, is broadly, uh, the way we broadly define it is uh, the topics that you need uh, for the applied technologies that you've heard about quantum computing, quantum communication. And typically these topics have been well outside the high school or even early undergraduate uh, uh, remit, but uh, you know, there's been an explosion of availability to bring these basic topics into the early undergrad and high school, you'll hear uh, uh, Karen Jo Masler uh, uh, later today. So, so we wanted to talk about the project that we're running at Broadneck. Fortunately, at Broadneck High School, we have an hour, uh, a daily hour session where students can participate in clubs. Since quantum mechanics is pretty much outside the scope of most high school physics curriculum, unless maybe someone is teaching uh, the International Baccalaureate or you've had the opportunity to uh, teach at a private school where you can put together some personal curriculum. In my public school, I don't have that opportunity in the regular uh, classroom. But uh, interested uh, students who are interested to join physics club, uh, we meet every Tuesday for about a half an hour and we've been able to bring Peter in virtually from the Naval Academy uh, by means of Google Meet, where he is able to bring the students through uh, the quantum information science lessons that he's been putting together. And interestingly enough, we've had not only students, but uh, faculty have participated as well by means of Google Meet. We meet in our classroom, and if they can't meet in my classroom, they can join us by uh, Google Meet. So some of the reasons that we want to introduce the high school students to quantum information science, well, it's, it's pretty clear that the QIS industry is uh, expanding, looking for people to be able to show the specific essential skills that are necessary for QIS. And uh, frankly, at this stage, my high school students are simply interested in it. They're excited to be able to participate on a one-on-one -on -one basis with Peter. Uh, and um, Peter, do you wanna tell some more? Yeah, um, yeah, to, to follow up from John is, is uh, my personal motivation here, uh, I'm an experimentalist, uh, work, work on, on, on quantum sensing, but uh, you know, at the high school level, uh, exposure to real people who look like these students uh, who are working in this field is just critical. Uh, and so that's one of my main motivations is to, to bring in my colleagues and people I've worked with in, in the industry to, to really reflect to these students that, that they can be a part of this. 
for the broader national uh, kind of uh, quantum uh, coordination and quantum initiative, uh, it's clear that there is a, a need for a quantum trained workforce, at least in the near future, particularly in this region, actually. There, there you know, you see INQ down there in the bottom right uh, is up in College Park. Uh, but quantum information science topics can be introduced uh, at the early undergraduate, even at the high school level, and, and, and as we'll hear, you know, in the community college level, uh, those critical concepts, putting aside the, the, the advanced linear algebra the, that a physics student would need to get these students exposed to these, these very specific topics and get them ready to be interested in that workforce. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the pedagogical approach. Uh, so we call it spin first. Those of you who teach in the undergraduate probably have, uh, uh, have, have come across this term. And this mirrors actually the shift I'm making at the Naval Academy where I teach the introductory quantum course is shifting kind of away from a wave first uh, pedagogy that requires quite a bit of differential equations uh, to solve and focusing first and foremost on a spin one half system, the canonical qubit. And what this allows me to do with John's students is using very simple models, only with two level quantum systems, introduce the, 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 the kind of uh, the critical aspects of superposition uh, of entanglement and measurement. And that allows them to kind of get their hands on what uh, are, are the baseline uh, concepts underneath quantum information. Uh, uh, topics and, and uh, technologies. And so really where we are right now is I've given them the rules of the game. So kind of presenting quantum mechanics as a game, these are the set of rules. And we've introduced those, those basic concepts to them using simple models such as, such as coins and, and, and that they can really kind of get their heads around. Peter mentioned that uh, with the spin first approach, uh, we can kind of sidestep some of the differential equations that are necessary uh, if we were to do quantum mechanics, starting with uh, Schrodinger's equation. But my high school students uh, don't, at this point, most of them don't have that mathematical rigor to be able to uh, understand that. So we are able to introduce basic concepts by using some of uh, some popular videos. You can see uh, Veritasium there on the right-hand side. Peter has introduced some traditional lecturing where uh, some of just the basic rules of quantum mechanics are introduced. Uh, we've started uh, a quantum tic-tac-toe, introducing that to the students. And we look forward to being able to incorporate some of these other uh, games that are available. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, John and I are really working on small bite-sized chunks. You know, we have about half an hour with the students to talk about these topics. And so really having quick pithy videos that they can watch um, that are vetted <laughs> uh, from real experts. So, so here, this slide's an eye chart and we'll, and we'll be happy to provide it to you guys later. We've tried to collect some of the vetted uh, kind of bite-sized uh, high school level videos and, and, and topics that and games that, that we've used with the students. But uh, Talia Gershon, who's, who was at IBM Quantum, has some really great short uh, uh, explainers on uh, quantum information technologies and, and Veritasium uh, also has some great stuff. But as far as the games, I wanna focus on that in our middle column or, or, or the, the curricula and then the games. In our middle column there, there's, there's really kind of a wealth of resources that are available open source on the archive that are geared toward um, high school curricula. John and I are following uh, uh, the consortium from Fermilab, the Perry et al, that first, that first uh, citation there. And that's just a really complete, uh, uh, you know, uh, a full uh, curricula with activities. And it's broken down in kind of the, the the chunks that a high schooler might get and has some, some activities for advanced high schoolers. Uh, just local, you know, up at Virginia Tech, Sophia Ekonomu has, has, and her team has produced a really wonderful uh, teaching quantum information science for early undergrad and high schoolers that I actually roll into my undergrad exposure to QIS. And then talking about games, um, Tom Wong, who 
is at Creighton University, was a high school physics teacher, uh, and, and now he's a quantum computing researcher and has produced some really fun uh, tabletop games, uh, one called Cubit Touchdown there that, that I would recommend for, for anybody wanting to uh, uh, put games into their, their teaching. And then their instructor resources or references I have to the right, those are kind of the higher level resources that John and I are using to craft the way and we just to it. dovetail off of what you're saying, Peter, just I do want to emphasize, again, this item number one, Perry and mm -hmm. company. Uh, it's very, the concepts are at a level that my high school students can really benefit from. We've been able to have some really good participation. Uh, here are some pictures of students uh, in my classroom. And then you can see on the smart board in the center, uh, that's actually Peter Googling in his, on the left-hand side of the smart board are some of his notes that he's been, that he presents. The students actually are interested enough in the sense that we have given them some, not quite homework, but ideas, suggestions of things to study, a video perhaps, and then come back during uh, the next session to be able to discuss. Now, mind you, these are all students who are interested. They, they do not, they're not taking this for a course or for a grade. Uh, we've had uh, the students come in just on the weekly basis as a physics club. We've had ninth to 12th graders, students that haven't even been introduced to physics yet have joined in on these sessions. In the future, we hope to be able to do some uh, virtual field trips, maybe to some labs that do similar science that Peter does. But uh, generally speaking, have been very pleased with the students' uh, participation. There's been some very good positive feedback. Yeah, so uh, so far we've been happy. Again, you know, there's not a lot of time with the students uh, just because this is a voluntary um, uh, program. But uh, I've been really uh, excited and it's been really refreshing to deal with them uh, and the questions they come up with, they're really insightful. Uh, so the interest level has been, been much higher than I thought, which has been great. Uh, we are completing kind of the introductory material now. We've gone through entanglement where we're gonna have another session with the quantum tic-tac-toe. Uh, but eventually kind of my goal with John is to move into uh, hands-on uh, building quantum circuits via the, the open source uh, products that are available through Qiskit, which is uh, uh, tied to the IBM quantum, for instance. But there are other, other uh, uh, tools out there where, where students can eventually run circuits on, on real you know, uh, qubit machines uh, that are out there in the industry. We're kind of thinking maybe time scale there, maybe what next year or so, Peter, on yeah. that? Or yeah. as, as time allows. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to be able to share and we'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, John and Peter. And also thank you for keeping on time. Uh, <laughs> do we have uh, questions? I, I had a one, uh, hey, my video's off. I had a, uh, one, I kind of wanted to know, uh, and I don't know if you mentioned this, how many students you have and sort of how did you start, how did you advertise the club? Like, is it better to do it in the beginning of the year or no? Because I am thinking of starting a um, QIS uh, interest club also. Well, we've had physics, physics clubs have been going for a few years at Broadneck High School. I'm the faculty sponsor for it. And so there's a little bit of a history there. And at the beginning of the year, I would just announce in my physics classes that I am the faculty sponsor. I hope you might be interested in joining. And I specifically would mention that we're going to be going through quantum information science, bringing in uh, Dr. Brereton from the Naval Academy to uh, give lessons. We've had uh, sessions with uh, up to 15 students or so who've come in. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. It spreads mostly by word of mouth. I'll approach specific students that I think might be interested and give them personal invitations. And I find that most successful. Thank you. Sure. And I, I saw in the chat, uh, people asking for the links. Uh, so we are happy to share share our slides so people can get to those links. So, so uh, yeah, however we need to do that. Um, Dan, Daniela. Oh, hi, thank you. That, that's a very nice uh, presentation. 
and program that you have. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to have a virtual uh, trip or visit. Could you uh, mm -hmm. tell a little bit so, that? Sure. Last year, actually, uh, when we went into quarantine and we're doing online teaching, I had the idea that, hey, we could continue field trips by visiting some local labs. And Peter's was one of the first labs that we actually visited. And we would set up by Google Meet. And I had, uh, we would bring students, the, the students would join in virtually. And in real time, the research professionals would show us through their lab facility. Uh, and we would have really good student participation with that. I would offer extra credit. And so that was a, a big incentive, but we would have anywhere from 30 to 80 students participating in the um, virtual field trips. We've also visited, uh, well, in addition to Peter's lab, we visited a, a couple that <clears throat> uh, work with gravitational waves. That was last year. But uh, this year I have in mind to contact um, an acquaintance at the uh, Naval Labs. And uh, I'm sure maybe we can revisit Peter's lab as well. Yeah, and I'll put in a plug too uh, for APS is running Quantum Crossings. Uh, it's a, a program with a lot of local, uh, well, it, not and not local uh, quantum industries. So Rigetti, Quantum, uh, IBM, where they're holding a session for, for interested high schools and high school teachers. I think it's happening on the 26th and I think the registration is closed, but I'd imagine they'll do something similar oh, that's uh, right. later yeah. in the year. Oh, that's okay, we, we are going to have to, uh, we are going to have to move on. Uh, thank you very much. And John and Peter, I just uh, give you a note that I left a, a note in the chat for some things that you might be interested in taking a look at.